So it's just sinking into the ground just like that. It's just magically disappearing. Hi guys, my name is Barodante and welcome back to the game. So yeah, I continue working on mostly optimizing my horror game. And while I was researching how to optimize things, I stumbled upon this thing called virtual textures. And I've heard about them before, but only about the one side of the question. And recently I learned uh, another side. So what are virtual textures? Basically virtual textures, the way you use them all the time in Unreal Engine is you right click any texture, like normal texture, <laughs> and you convert to a virtual texture. Right now it is already VT, the virtual texture, so it can only go back to regular. So what it means is Unreal Engine will only stream the resolution of this texture that is necessary for the texture to appear sharp right now, considering the distance and the size of the texture and the screen at the moment. So you're never like uh, streaming 4K, 8K textures from all the objects. Uh, if they're far away, they're will be like super small resolution and is doing it in real time for you you never even have to think about it so many call virtual textures like free performance but i've been using that since the beginning didn't help me much so far but another really cool thing another cool side about virtual textures is uh like these two textures right here they're called runtime virtual textures. And uh, these types of textures let you completely remove the load from your computer when you're using very complex shaders. And one thing where you use complex shaders is the landscape. Because right now it's like a super simple landscape I'm having so far. I wasn't doing a lot of like uh, blending of layers or anything, but already I'm using so-called texture bombing. So you can see right here, each texture, like it's clearly repeating in like a grid, but it's not exactly perfect. It has certain variations. So if you're a character and you're standing on the ground, it will look a lot more natural because the texture is constantly rotated at different angles with each uh, repetition of it and also um, it's not actually cut in a grid it's cut in like this end gone shape that's also having like this noise applied to its edges which will be nearly impossible to find and show you guys right now maybe the only way to do it would be to increase the resolution of the virtual texture and this way the seam will be showing up a lot sharper than the textures themselves there it is so this you can see how it's like a very wiggly noisy kind of line that's the split between the two textures you can see it now but if i lower the resolution of the virtual texture down to the actual resolution of the texture, the photos themselves that are used for the material, then it's like almost like it's impossible to see it at all. But yeah, that's one thing. I would love it if it would be possible to completely remove all the repetition by using a tiny texture that keeps repeating everywhere, but I guess that's impossible because it is, after all, the same image you're repeating. It doesn't matter how much you rotate and scale it around, it's still the same image, so it looks kind of repeating, but definitely a lot more natural. Another side about uh, like this runtime virtual texture, right now if I quickly turn my screen, you may have noticed there was like a lower resolution version of the texture. There it is, like it popped in a little bit. So that's what it's doing, like it's streaming little blocks of the texture all over the place instead of having the whole object, you know, with these sharp textures showing up on them all the time. So that's removing a lot of the load from the computer when you're playing the game and you have this giant landscape, giant object covered with uh, like probably billions of pixels, you know, it's a huge amount. So yeah, it takes a lot of space on the, the hard drive because the thing that's happening, instead of having just one, you know, small rectangular texture and then just a command to repeat it forever and then, you know, your GPU and CPU are doing all the work to make that happen. In this case, it's sort of grabbing all of the commands inside of the material, which is uh, right here, right? 
So this texture bombing is inside of this function. So it's doing this and then it's applying this uh, tiling, this uh, texture coordinates to these textures and then putting them together, like applying certain things here and there. And then it would uh, create a frame with these textures. In this case, with the virtual texture, all of this stuff is done and then it's put not into the material, but into the virtual texture. And it's literally this one. So if we look at, at my landscape, it is this long rectangle that is like brown, right? So the virtual texture looks exactly the same way. And this is another virtual texture that's doing also the same landscape, but it's just baking the height information about where the landscape is in the world. So those two things are baked and then the same texture, this brown texture that we bake into here, it's used to actually apply itself in the material. So what happens when you're playing the game, all of this is happening once and then if it doesn't need to be updated, and it doesn't because it's a landscape is just standing still, it will be just using this pre-baked texture and just picking it up with those little bits. It kind of looks like Google Maps when you move the camera around in there and zoom in and zoom out, it's loading in smaller bits like that's also a virtual texture. It, it works the same way. So it's all pre-baked and none of these commands, none of this texture bombing or anything, none of this is being done each frame or something like that. It's already like a dead baked texture or this huge enormous sized texture, but no CPU or GPU has to work on this. It's just used like that. So it's kind of like baking a gigantic texture for the whole landscape instead of UV tiling even. Making things a lot faster and it's broken down into small tiles. So in here you have settings for the resolution of these tiles and everything and how exactly things are broken down. So that's really cool and that's something I applied uh, recently to uh, try to improve my performance of the game. But overall, let me quickly show you guys control shift coma. This is my GPU probe. So uh, this line is showing which part of the rendering or doing anything in one frame that was rendered right now from the camera, how much time each part of the game is taking each frame. So the giant piece right here is Nanite. So I just need to keep working, trying to improve Nanite to make things faster because this is an enormous chunk of performance here. So I don't know, either I have to still work with a lot smaller amount of objects and not just throw things around like this. So apparently the whole thing about unlocking polygons with Nanite doesn't really look like unlocking to me if uh, I really need to use less objects to make it work faster. So I'm using fallback objects uh, for Nanite and everything, if you guys know what that is. It improved things a little bit, but not much. Another thing that may have improved a little bit is that I remeshed all the objects as much as I could, not so much with the trees, but with the trees I removed some of the polygons from the inside. But I baked everything so there is no overlapping polygons. Like these leaves right here, they're not separate polygons that overlap each other other, they're actually like voxel remeshed, so there is no polygons inside of polygons, so to speak. So it's uh, kind of really hard to do, and with the trees it's kind of impossible. First of all, they're giant, and no voxel remesh will handle that, as well as boolean. And another thing is that these trees have flat leaves, so voxels just won't pick that up at all. So yeah, I don't know what to do about that, but I'll keep experimenting with the assets. I think that's the best bet I have so far. And of course, yeah, fallback meshes are important to accelerate the lighting a little bit, but all of that is very tiny improvements so far. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, giant nanite, giant like diffuse indirect and ambient occlusion. So that's lumen. And in here, like base pass, again, lumen once again, 
in here. Yeah, obviously the main problem here is just nanite, so uh, I'll see what I can do about that. But yeah, on the side of textures of materials, I did my best to, you know, make the shader complexity as small as possible. And you can see that the stones are kind of darker shade of green, like still pretty good, I guess, especially considering that stones are not that frequent in here. But yeah, they're darker green because of another really cool thing about virtual texture, specifically the runtime virtual texture of the landscape, is that what you can do with that is this. So you guys can see the stone is put into the ground and then there's this extra border that's perfectly continuing you see it's the actual stone but it's perfectly continuing the texture of the landscape a little bit with like a noise onto the stone so it would blend in much better like it's in this uh in this mud in this uh, like forest floor is kind of uh, covering it up a little bit so that's the thing I built, just uh, finished building it today, so it works really well, like all of that is procedurally generated, so I can't move it around, like one by one I mean. But if I just grab an asset, let's say this one, and I put it right here, oh I forgot how hard it is to put assets on the landscape manually, like procedural generation does all the rotations for you. But yeah, I put it like this, and you see, you can't even see where the edge of this object is. It's blending in so well with the surface of the landscape. So it's like that quick live kind of effect. So it's actually really cool and once I understood the way the virtual textures work I knew exactly what to do to make this effect happen. This is the whole code for blending things together. So what I do is I pick up this virtual texture, uh, the, the brown one, since it's storing the whole landscape, like the whole thing, so it knows exactly where each pixel of this gigantic texture is in the world without having to tile and align those tiles in any way, you can simply use this very texture and blend it on top of the stone. So that's what I did. And not just the texture, like it's called virtual texture, but it's storing like almost the whole material. It has a bunch of channels in here. The only thing that's missing is like metallic, I guess, from the basic PBR. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, the material of the stone here. And this is the material from this virtual texture. And they're blended together using this mask. And this mask is uh, mostly done using this other virtual texture that's about the vertical positioning of the landscape. And we subtract that from the position of the pixel of the shader of the actual stone. And based on that difference, then we apply all kinds of stuff, including the noises and everything, uh, to create like this kind of mask like just this distance plus the noise but yeah it's literally like somewhere over here the landscape is and then it's raised a little bit above it and with a gradient and applied certain noise to it simple as that you are just blending things together like that so that magical thing about having the whole texture like the end result of tiling the whole thing and processing all the effects you want to do with the textures on the landscape they're baked into this one giant thing so you can easily stream it on any object that's next to it so it's just sinking into the ground just like that is just magically disappearing or one thing about it the problem about it is that it is just projecting from the top and that's all it pretty much can do and because of that if it's very vertical it will be stretching the texture a lot so one thing you do is you sort of mask which is something I also did in the in that uh, masking in my material is you mask away very vertical angles of the surfaces. So that's why when the stone is like this, the distance of the blending is so tiny. It's just a little bit to kind of hide the actual completely sharp edge of the polygon. But overall, it won't propagate all over. And if it's a lot more flat, it actually goes a lot further because um, it's kind of uh, like the dust filtering where you're using just the vertical axis of the normal. And that way it's... Uh, kind of like dusted with the texture like right here this is a very flat part and it has a very strong texture presence from the landscape 
while the thing that's vertical right next to it is completely uh, excluded from that. And you can see even like how the normal map of the texture of the stone is kind of going back and forth between the landscape and the stone. So yeah, this is a pretty cool thing, not too expensive and lets you really terraform with just static meshes, which is something that will be very useful for me with the whole procedural generation of the environment, because uh, the way Epic Games does it, and as I mentioned in the previous video, like you can't really um, use procedural generation like this whole thing that uh, you can quickly update and, uh, you know, just use uh, things like this, like some kind of guides to uh, completely change the environment. There it is. Uh, following uh, the new shape, it's it will create a different thing with uh, a bunch of rules applied to them. You can do whatever you want. More on that in the previous video about the forest. And you can add a lot more rules, and I will for sure. Right now, I'm just uh, making sure things are organized better, and mostly I'm working on performance. But one thing you can't do with this is uh, changing the shape of the landscape, like uh, create a trench of sorts or build a mountain smoothly like sculpt the actual landscape you can't do that you have to do it manually but what epic games do with procedurally generated environments is that they place like giant rocks there's like assets in uh, quixel megascans library that are really high scale rocks like actual bits of mountains and stuff like that and you can just place that uh, procedurally and just blend the materials like this and there you go that's your you you know, changing of the shape of the landscape just like that, no problem. All you have to do is just have some kind of naturally just quickly sculpted, somewhat flat, somewhat uneven uh, base surface of the landscape, and then you can do whatever you want with it, with actual huge realistic assets like that. So that's pretty cool, and that's why I think virtual textures will be a big help with the procedurally generated content. Another reason why I did this was because um, well, uh, right now the landscape is looking kind of ridiculous, absolutely the same texture copied everywhere and that's it, but it won't stay that way if I actually want to build stuff more complicated. Like a lot of the times one thing you do is you mask the normal direction of the landscape and on the flat sides there will be some foliage texture like some kind of grass or something and when it's more vertical there would be like a bold rock or just a slope kind of textures and those can be defined automatically with like material layers so that involves this giant masking of the whole thing based on that on those angles and everything and that's already a pretty complex thing especially considering there's many materials that are blended together into one there can be like 10 or more depending on how big and varying the environment is what kind of textures you want to have blending around and all of that is using a lot of these layers so that's how you get a pretty high shader complexity like this stuff will, won't be green anymore it will become very red if you blend a lot of these materials together on the landscape and landscape is everywhere so it's constantly present on the screen and uh, it's very hard to render it but with the virtual texture no matter how complex things are they're all then baked into this runtime virtual texture and it will say literally the same color as far as I'm expecting it to be at least because there is nothing to be more complex if it's just one texture in the end so that's really cool and that's like at least things won't get worse from what they are right now at least uh, the textures on the landscape uh, are kind of solved in the moment so that's good to know now another really cool thing and a kind of a huge achievement on my side is this right here as you guys can see i can now finally package the project which is something I couldn't do before. So I looked it up. Uh, the problem was in the fact, like, first of all, a couple of weeks ago, I realized I needed to install actual Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio, uh, this guy right here, to be able to compile the game at all and package it into a, an actual release right here. But also on top of that, you have to make sure you install proper parts of Visual Studio, the one that's called like game development kind of stuff. And it says the word un real right in it so that's something not to miss for sure because without it it just won't tell you what's wrong just uh, some kind of unknown error so this already i tried it on nadia's laptop it works 
completely like there is no unreal engine in there uh, unreal editor so it's uh, working just fine and yeah john doesn't have hair that's because in the final build i removed his hair when i saw in the gpu probe how much time all these uh, hair curves are taking so i'm definitely using hair cards i actually thought i was using hair cards uh, i was using the lod3 version of john I, I am using it right now and I thought it was having that type of like a simple flat cards hair. But no, it was just very chunky, but still the curvy things. So yeah, right now it will still stutter terribly, but overall as I'm running, or le let's say I won't be even uh, running around, okay? Let's just start the level. And yeah, the background music. That's something I added. The, this is something I composed myself a while ago. I don't even remember where it's from. <laughs> maybe I did it on the iPad, maybe on, on the desktop, I don't remember. But right now I'll just stand still and we see we have 33 FPS. This is full QHD resolution, no upscaling, so 33. And if we go 50% upscaling, that will be 59, I'm seeing 60 sometimes. It's actually a bit above 60 usually when I'm not recording i guess so 33 and 60 33 and 59 and let's launch just the previous version that i packaged also no hair but right now well okay it's kind of kind of the same actually <laughs> with a lot of my testing is actually much like usually 10 fps difference i don't know how things are like of course still this is all very low difference like in here we're like 54 55 fps instead of 59 60 uh, but yeah in here it's like 30 32 and yeah a lot of these stutters like dipping performance where things just won't uh, work at all for like half a second uh, that's something that uh, became a lot less occurring in the latest version but yeah it, it's still all happening and i don't know definitely nanite is like one thing i need to keep uh, researching. So yeah, right now this is full QHD resolution. There will be stutters, but it's generally running smoother. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is um, I have a bunch of hotkeys in here. So first of all, um, right now we switched to temporal super resolution, that awesome upscaling algorithm that's uh, native in Unreal Engine 5. So everything is super sharp and very crisp and awesome, especially like if I go down to 50% resolution, like this is very sharp. It's not looking like 50% resolution at all. And right now I hit N and this is DLSS 2. So Nvidia upscaling. And it's quite different actually. So uh, they have different strong and weak sides. Nvidia is not looking great when we're standing still. So everything is like swimming around, all the samples, everything is just never standing still. And overall, uh, things are much blurrier comparing to temporal super resolution. Like all the leaves are much thinner and we can see much crisper details on them while Nvidia is a much more like smoother look. And yeah, uh, temporal super resolution is a lot more static, it's a lot more stable, so nothing is supposed to be moving and almost nothing is moving. A little bit of sampling here and there when there is very tiny details. But with Nvidia, everything is constantly moving. It's like all the bushes are covered in tiny bugs that are constantly moving around. So yeah, Nvidia is not that great on keeping things in place. But when you move around, things are a lot more consistent, like uh, no ghosting or any kind of uh, noisy details. Overall, everything is just looking like normal 3D graphics, so that's great for movement. And if we switch to temporal super resolution and start moving around, you can see all those super tiny crisp details that are looking so good. They kind of stick around when you move the uh, the details, especially when they're like rotating or moving forward. So everything is kind of like covered in this fuzz or something like that, like a static noise a little bit. And again, Nvidia is just a lot cleaner movement, which is... <laughs> I think much more important for a game. Although it's a horror game with puzzles, maybe a lot of static stuff will also be included. Maybe there will be actually more static situations. But what I was thinking about, since I can so easily like switch between different samplings, maybe it makes sense to like program it to like react to the amount of the movement of the camera in space. 
if you're moving around like immediately switch to like dlss and when you're like standing still just switch back to tsr the only thing is i don't think you can fade it in very easily it will always have like this little twitch like it's looking very different that's why it's uh not that easy to do and yeah another thing i have right here set up as a hotkey is actually a cool maybe even machine learning powered sharpening so it's not really upscaling but overall since things are a bit uh, like soft with dlss i'm also using a barrel effect on the camera that's like a post-process shader so everything is kind of like uh, bulged a little bit like this uh, i might drop this idea of using this effect later but um, like i should i think because things are very smooth like soft just because of that even at 100 percent resolution but anyway the point is the sharpening really comes in handy if we look at the leaves on the ground right now the ones that are in focus like this is becoming much clearer much sharper and this is a much softer look and with the uh, temporal super resolution, if we turn on the sharpening, it's like super clear. Look. Oh my god, you see how like it's complete mess of a noise when you move around. Things just stick around, some kind of white noise, like all the sky that was showing through the branches. They just keep showing around, like sticking to the edges of the details when they're already not relevant. But yeah, another cool thing I have here is this button so you can at any point turn on the sun meaning you turn on the sun shadows and remove the clouds and that's how things swish so yeah and uh, things run pretty fast this way as well like uh, i'm generally at 60 fps in the sunlight uh, when i'm not recording at least so that's pretty cool so i've been running around in here shooting enemies and everything with this uh, very questionable quality of the image because it's upscaling and all you can run around at like stable 30 fps at almost full resolution at like 75 percent upscaled uh in the sunlight uh, with even a flashlight we're still above 30 right now with uh, occasional dips like this now that's something that starts happening but yeah i've been shooting enemies around the only problem is they won't walk towards me anymore they never will like they both move right now as if they noticed me but they won't be able to come close and even like if i'm nearby they start attacking so they're like they fully work but they can't move and that's because the nav mesh doesn't work when i package the game if i open this same build of the game in the editor they will totally walk around so the nav mesh for some reason doesn't work maybe because i'm using the world partitioning now so yeah that's the way things are right now uh, i guess the only solid progress i had so far is how I can blend the stones with the ground. <laughs> That's really cool looking. Like, I don't know, I'm just loving this uh, appearance. And the fact that it's um, not that expensive to do and uh, easy to set up as well. So cool. So yeah, this is it. Uh, I wish I had better news about performance today, but alas, no such luck. Mostly like I I'll still have to keep digging into how to make Nanite work better. I, I really like I still have hope that it's about like uh, making assets more optimized for Nanite. Like the best thing to do, like the best asset for Nanite is the one that has just one shape, one surface. That is like, it can be as complex as you want, but it should be one shape with no overlapping polygons, hanging polygons, maybe even open loose parts. All of that is like, it creates extra work for Nanite, each frame, each asset. So yeah, I'll see about that and maybe I'll do more. Uh, as I said, some of the assets I managed to do that, but with the trees, it's really hard to remash that kind of stuff, so I don't know. So yeah, for now this is it. Let me know what you guys think. Optimizing the game is a hell of a thing, but I'm sure as hell not dropping this endeavor, because I need my game to run at solid 60 on Nadia's laptop that has 3070 Ti. Mine is running 3080 Ti, so I'll make sure it's 60 FPS on 3070 Ti laptop. That's my goal for now, at least. But yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Oh boy, oh boy. 
A lot of stuff to learn here. Funny thing how Nanite works for me in practice. Originally, it's like unlocking poly counts. You can do whatever you want, but at the same time, like, not really at all. Literally, if I would remove trees, things would work a lot faster. Isn't that kind of poly count related? Question mark. 